Hey, in this video, we're going to be talking about how far the proper distance or how far you should stand from the ball. Um, seems to be that it could be a little simpler to get it right. I think there's a little too much mystery. So stick with me. I'm going to try to simplify the whole thing for you. Hey, this is Steve from Hit It Longer. Um, I've got a long club, I've got a short club, and um, today I'm gonna try to simplify um, the measurement that's necessary uh, from the handle end of the stick to your body or standing the right distance from the ball. Um, I think people tend to make it a little overcomplicated. I'm gonna see if I can show you a one-size-fits-all solution to your problem. Okay, let's get into it. Okay, let's first talk about the the two errors. Of course, there's kind of only two errors you can make when lining up to the ball as far as distance from the ball. That's too close or too far. Let's look at the problems and maybe you can diagnose yourself based on these. I've got my nine iron here. If I were standing too close to the ball like this, and this is only about a fist from my belt. The problem with this would be that I would not have enough room to fit this thigh under the shaft without significantly raising the shaft and making it more difficult to strike the ball and square up the face. You can see how if I'm really close to it, this thigh won't really be able to, to work underneath because I don't have any room. So that's one error. Uh, not a lot of people fall in this category. More, most people who make this error, error are falling into the too far away category. Now I switched to my driver because most golfers tend to screw this up with the driver more than they do the irons. They seem to be kind of okay on the irons when they get the driver out and it's like they want to really extend their arms out there. So they end up standing like this because they really need to reach way out for it. So the problem with this is it encourages bad posture. You can see there I was probably bent over a little too far, but also I'm feeling my weight way into my toes. I've already lost balance. I'm already off balance to begin with. And um, balance is super key in order to return the club consistently and hit for power. You cannot hit for power if you're falling off balance as you go into the strike. So now let's take a look at the solution. Like I said, I'm promising a one size fits all solution. And that's going to be one spread out hand, just like that. From pinky to thumb, even a, a fist and a long thumb would do it too. But just one spread out hand span, you see, will give me what I need. And it'll work uni uh, universally for pretty much all golfers and all clubs. So let's go back to the nine iron again. All right, so now we're back to the shorter club. You'll see I'm going to use the same measurement here. And that's one spread out hand, just like that. So now we're going to look at the universal universality of it. For the first universal part of it is that taller people tend to have bigger hands, shorter people that tend to have smaller hands. Um, it's not exact in any case, and you might have to make subtle adjustments here and there if your hands are smaller or too big, but pretty much it's universal. 
also universal as far as one club, um, one stance fits all clubs or all tools. I've set up two golf balls here and you'll see I'm going to be able to walk right into both of them with my body and my arms in exactly the same position. It's like one universal setup. Okay, there's my spread out hand. Nine iron. Notice that the handle of the nine iron is in exactly the same spot. And so if I just wanted to switch, I would just stick my hand on there and it's like it's interchangeable. Okay, the only thing I would do different from the driver to the nine is I would probably narrow up the feet and open up a little bit. So driver a little bit closed, a little narrower and open on the nine, but the measurement from the belt to the, this end of the stick is going to stay pretty much the same. So if you were to actually measure that in linear inches, I think for me it's somewhere, oh, it's in the neighborhood of seven to eight inches for me. I'm six foot two. Um, somebody who's five foot six might be more in the five to six inch range um, if you're standing at the proper angle bent over, of course. That, um, you've got some other angles that you've got to get right before this starts to make sense. So you'll need to go back and review those things. You could see, for example, if I was standing really tall with no angle, then my arm would tend to be really close and really tall. And if I was bent way, way over too much, this is actually a pretty comfortable uh, distance from the ball, but you can see I'm now, I'm now exceeding my hand span. Um, so I might have pr uh, other types of problems um, striking the ball. Um, if I was standing too bent over and too far back. So, of course, this is a given that you're going to be bowing at about 30 degrees or so from the hips, not caving in like this, not bending at all or not bending too much. Um, so keep that in mind. It's kind of a good universal measurement for you to use is if you just took your hand and you spread out the fingers like that and you're taking the the pinky and you're going to put it right on just under your belt and you'll just stick your thumb out to the butt of the club like that. So work on that a little bit when you have a chance. Uh, it may be uncomfortable. If you are the person who stands too far from a driver, moving in so if I'm, I'm way back here and I'm one of these people who wants to really reach and extend my arms, okay, moving in back to normal distance again is going to feel incredibly crowded to you. And you will probably hit 30 out of the first 50, maybe way in the shank up here until you get used to swinging a little bit closer. So um, the, the solution, if you're having a hard time adjusting from standing way too far away and you're trying to move in back to the right distance again, here's my, here's my hand spread. I'd put, I wouldn't put, fill it with golf balls, but I'd put an empty basket of right there and just make sure that I don't clip it with the toe of my club going through. So I might just take some you know, take the measurement and then just go ahead and dink the ball and try not to hit the, the empty basket sitting right there. Hey, I hope that this, uh, this tip has been helpful for you. Um, if you have any comments or especially questions about this, um, please leave them in the um, comment section down below. Uh, as usual, I've got a couple of uh, cool freebies, a free a uh, video to cure your slice and a free ebook that will help you get some more yards off the tee. And they're down in the description. Just click the links and go get them. Um, thanks again to Golf Development Complex, Moore Park, California for this beautiful scenery. And um, thanks a lot for watching the video. Uh, I hope you watch some more. I'll see you the next time.